Uh, this is very powerful, this, this reframing of the other person through Jesus because, again, the, the perspective Jesus holds on me as a person and the other person can be quite different than how I might in the moment read the situation. And it doesn't depend on how that person responds to me necessarily. You see, because Jesus' perspective, right, is not based on how they're treating me, it's based on his long-term vision for them. That doesn't mean that there might not be a time for boundaries and for, and, and for allowing there to be some, hey, hang on a second, I'm not just gonna let you do whatever you want to me, you can't just abuse me. That wouldn't further Christ's purposes in your life or in my life. It's not saying that, but how I view you and how I view what's going on gets defined by Jesus' perspective. Do you see that? Now, this leads to something very important uh, in this process because what Paul envisions is that these two individuals living in close proximity are allowing their views of each other to be shaped by Jesus, to learn to love each other as Jesus loved them. This sets up a, a process. I'm gonna use a house here that I think will help us understand what Scripture teaches as the the long-term view of relationships. Here in the foundation is love. Investing in each other, mutually investing in each other uh, in a loving way as Christ defines it. This leads to the ground floor, and I'm gonna put here trust is the ground floor. If we both love each other and invest this way, we begin to trust each other. And then if we have that ground floor of trust, then we can start to work together to build a hopeful future that gives us hope for the future. Let me describe how this works. Trust can be, or love can be defined this way. I like you. I respect you. And I want to invest in you. We'll put that up on the slide. I want to invest in you, okay? Let me describe this just from the passages that we looked at. I like you, I value you. And very much you get that sense that there's this sense of a deeply valuing with a sincere heart, Paul says, in one of the passages, to value the other person or to like the other person. Now, I want us to practice right now here in all of our regional sites. Look at someone around you and give them the message that you like them without using any words, okay? You all know how to do it. Yeah, so you guys are all experts at this, okay? This is how I like you works, okay? This is what I like you looks like. <laughs> right? It's sort of that inner cocoa, like, <laughs> right? We like you. And for some of you, you know, you start tap the other person on the, sh the shoulder. We all know how to show other people that we like them, that, that we're, we're drawn to them, we value them. And so, um, now you can say the words, I love you, and actually all of your nonverbals don't reinforce that. We don't send that message. So it's like this. Yeah, I love you. If anything changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> right? And there's times like that. It's like, yes, I love you, but you're driving me crazy. And, uh, and when you look at the nonverbals, what you see is something totally different than what the words are saying. No eye contact. Um, no smiling. When someone walks in the room, the other person pretty soon leaves the room. You know, we can say we love each other or we like each other, but are we sending that message? I respect you. That is another dimension of love. Very clear in the passage. Respect is very important. What does respect mean? Don't touch my stuff. Right? You touched my stuff, you broke my stuff. You said you would do something. Did you do it? Right, those are symbols. You know, we had an agreement. You said you would do this. Did you do this? That's a respect. There's another way that we, we see respect played out, and that is I value your opinion. If you say something, do I say, you know what, that's a good point. Never thought of that. I have to think about that. Hmm. That shows that you respect um, their perspective, that you value what they say. To not respect somebody is, is sort of they, they make a suggestion or they give a thought, and you're like, Oh, stupid. Yeah, but what about this? And then they say something. Yeah, but what about this? And what about this? But, 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 but. And then pretty soon it's like, well, there's no point in even talking to you because you don't respect what I say. Respect is a part of loving the other person. You allow them to change your mind. You value your commitments. You value what they, um, they have and they hold, the things that are important to them. And then I want to invest in you. 
Um, here we see again, particularly if you read through what Paul says about husbands with wives, there's this huge part about investing in them or parents with children investing in them. This is another part of love, um, of taking time to say, do you know what, you've had a hard week. I recognize that. Do you know what, let me do this for you so you can just crash. I wanna do something that will invest in you. Do you know what, you, you've been just giving it and you've just been pouring out. I know what you love. Let's go out and have a great night tonight. This is some of your favorite food. Here's something that you love, you know. I don't particularly like, you know, uh, whatever it is, the action, everything's blowing up, CGI, but do you know what, you love it, so let's go do that, right? That shows that you wanna invest in them. You wanna spend time with them. Um, they're important to you. These messages of love now lead to something very important, trust. Trust is like a switch. And then you can say in the middle here is uncertain, where you're just not sure. Let me explain how trust works and illustrate it from the Bible. If you trust a person, this is an emotional switch. If we both send these I love you messages, I like you, I respect you, I want to invest in you. If you both send that back and forth, in time you trust the person. What that means is you feel like you know their heart and if something goes wrong and they don't do something that you like, you assume that they didn't mean that. So you sort of filter it away. So every good thing they do, you're like, yes, that's why I trust you. And every time they let you down, it's like, ah, that's not really who you are and you sort of dismiss it. Okay, but when you don't trust the person, you feel like they've betrayed you, it flips to the other side and it filters it the opposite way, which now becomes uh, a problem for the relationship because when they do something good, then you're like, do you know what, you're trying to trick me. Why are you trying to do that? Why are you trying to set me up? When they do something bad, it's like, aha, see? I knew that you're out to get me and I, I gotta watch, you know, keep my eye on you, you tricksy fat hobbit. You know, it's like, <laughs> so, <laughs> right? So this becomes a problem, this trust and mistrust thing, right? Because it filters our relationships. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And you see this in the story of Jesus because the religious leaders that didn't like him, he would do a miracle. They'd say, yeah, how do we know you're from God? He's like, oh, no, do a miracle. And they're like, ha, see, it has to be the power of the devil working through you. Right, so everything he would do, they would always categorize in a negative way. This is what happens in our relationships. So this is why it's so important to build this foundation of love so that you have the ground floor of trust. What is in the hope of the future? And here are three things that you can do once you trust. Number one, you can solve relationships, you can solve problems, you work together to solve problems. Number two, um, you can help each other achieve goals. Number three, you can, as you can see this, you can start to create shared memories and meaning. If I don't trust that person, I don't predict a positive future. I don't wanna solve problems with them because they think they're gonna stick me in the back. I don't wanna help them achieve their goals. I wanna get away from them. I don't wanna create shared memory or meaning with them because most of the time I'm with them it actually is a painful experience. So I don't predict the future. I don't have hope for the future. Do you see how that works? Aha, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, a beautiful verse that summarizes this. is maybe something you can remember as a mental hook. It's a, 1 Corinthians 13, often read at weddings. The apostle uh, Paul is writing, and he says this, and maybe some of you even know this verse. Now these three remain, maybe you wanna say it with me, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is, shout it out, love. love. Faith is another word for trust. The essence of relationships is love, trust, and be able to predict a positive future, hope. That's the essence of healthy relationships. But Paul goes on to say, but the greatest of these, or the foundation of these, is love. That's what we learn. 